You know, uh, we've been talking over the last few weeks, it kind of weaves in and out. Uh, we kind of bob in and out of hitting this truth. But to, to see the results of the word, you know, the, the Bible describes itself as the uh, uh, incorruptible seed. Now, if you want to have fruit from something, the seed has to be planted. Uh, so you, you can't be praying about something you don't have planted already in your heart and expect to have fruit. You know, if you're believing for healing, then you need to have that word seed in you for healing or whatever it is. Does that make sense? Uh, but even at that, uh, we were talking, to, I think it was last week, maybe at Gateway, different seed germinate at different times. You know, you got corn seed, cotton seed, soybean, you know, and even in the natural, you have, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, animals and they all, the gestation period is different. You know, I think an elephant's like 18 months. Who wants to carry that long, Right. But the bigger the baby, sometimes the longer the gestation. And I don't know what you're believing for, but I think I heard even from the platform this morning, don't grow weary in well-doing. See, you might not understand how long it actually takes that thing you're believing for to come about. You don't, sometimes we don't always understand what it takes to get from here to there in the kingdom. You know, we pray today, expect to see it tomorrow, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But will you hold on until you see it? So will you hold on until you see it? Because how many know God is faithful? God is faithful. And I believe, again, like that deluge we had, he said, so shall my word be. It will not return void. It's like rain. Like rain that causes and comes down and hits seed and causes seed to grow, seed to germinate, seed to produce. His word's going to produce in our lives. So come on, let's give him an amen for that, right? The Lord is good. Ezekiel chapter 36. If you have your Bibles this morning, follow along. You can look on your device or tablet or iPad or I pay for iPad or whatever you got. And uh, I, I, I like hard copy and I uh, don't have anything against uh, iPads and stuff. I use my phone, but thank God for a hard copy that they can't change overnight. You know, that, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but even in some of the updates, they've already started trying to change the text. And uh, don't be surprised. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to happen. And uh, that's why you need at least a, a couple of hard copies at home. But Ezekiel chapter 36, and we'll go in at verse 24. The Lord said, I will take you from among the heathen, and I will gather you out of all countries. And I will bring you into your own land. Say, my own land. Oh. Glory to God. He said, I will sprinkle you clean or sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. Verse 26, and a new heart also will I give unto you, and a new spirit would I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You shall keep my judgments and do them. You shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers and your people. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Father, we thank you for your word today. Let it find, Lord, fertile ground in our heart. Let it produce, Lord, the desired results that you desire to see. Let it bring an empowerment into us so that we can do what you put us on this planet to do. We declare thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. God, we need a whole bunch of as it is, but I believe as we pray we're going to see it. Lord God, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in part six on this series. God has given me new stuff. Come on, say new stuff. And he said, I will put a new heart in you, and I will put a new spirit in you. How many of y'all know Jesus can do some heart surgery? And, uh, you know, some of us have already had it. Some of us, he's still working on us in a bit, in a sense. But I want to go to the Word because I want to see something in the Word so that we can have an expectation for even more. Acts chapter 9. He is a heart surgeon like no other. Like no other. And we got a new heart. Glory to God. He's prophesied it here, talking about things that were going to come, but I want to see some of these examples so that we can have an expectation, grieving a greater expectation. Acts chapter 9, in verse 1, and I'm in Romans, so I was going to say, man, that doesn't look right. Hey, it wasn't. It's a good scripture, but not for today. Acts chapter 9, verse 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any that were in this way or of this way, speaking about Christians and this new, new thing that was going on, he said whether they were men or women, that he would bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And many have heard about the Damascus Road experience, and that's part of this new heart that we're going to be looking at this morning. It said suddenly there was a light shine from him from heaven on him, and he fell to the earth. And he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why 
persecute thou me. Isn't it amazing or, or interesting that the Lord, you know, he's very uh, particular in the words that he chooses. Uh, he didn't say, why are you persecuting the church? He said, why are you persecuting me? Because he does take it personal. See, that's why you never become a weapon against your brother or your sister. Amen. Never allow the enemy to use your tongue against your brother, your sister, our, our church family, or any church family. Because it's only two bodies, right? Light and dark. And there's only, you know, one body of light, one body of dark. There, it, it's not Baptists against Methodists, against, you know, Presbyterians, against, come on. For too long we've allowed religion to divide us. We need God to unite us. Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting the Baptists? Why are you hitting the Methodists? Why are you telling? You know, he probably could have in this day and time. But he said, why are you persecuting me? Because he is the church and he takes it personal. So I know y'all don't do it, but this is for those people you're going to cross paths with this week. If you hear them saying stuff ugly, tell them hush. Go ahead and practice. Say hush. hush. Honey. You can throw that honey on there because we in the South, we get away with that. Honey child, you need to zip that lip. He said, why are you persecuting me? And, 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 and it's so, so unique here that here Saul was brought up in the church in a sense. I said, that's why you can be in church but not have church in you. Uh -huh. Brought up in the word, around the word, knowing the word, but didn't know the word. Right. He knew the word in letter, didn't know the word in spirit because he said, Lord, who are you? He's the one you've been reading about your entire life, Paul. He's the one you've been studying for your entire life up till now, and you don't even recognize him. See, it's, it's not the religion we need. It's the relationship. Jesus, did, did come, he didn't die to give us a, a formality. He died to give us relation. Right. So anyway, he said, who, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. It's hard to kick against the pricks. And he is trembling and astonished. He said, Lord, what? Do you want me? He had an encounter. Man, we need, let's pray right now. Father, we pray for our leaders to have encounters. Lord, we don't need to have a, we don't need our leaders having a form of godliness but denying power. Lord, we don't, we don't want to take sides. We want to take over. God, it's not about being left or right. It's not being concerned. Lord, too many of them want to say, I'm a concern. I'm not, I want to be a Jesus. I want to be a kingdom man. Our Lord, I think we got kingdom people. You said the government on your shoulders. So, Lord, we don't, we don't pray for the left or the right. We pray for the kingdom. Kingdom come, your will be done in these elections coming forth. And Lord, we thank you for turnarounds. We thank you for the same thing we see you doing in Saul's heart to do in people's heart. Lord, to see a complete turnaround, a radical shift, a radical change. Father, not getting with man's agenda, but getting with your agenda. You said, if my people called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from things that are not pleasing to you, then, God, we would begin to see this change happen. God, we declare it has already begun in Jesus' name. Amen. Fearing and trembling, Lord, what would you? You see the encounter taking place right before. He's laying it out. What do you want me to do? Right attitude. It's the right attitude. It's immediately he realizes, I've not been about the Father's business. I've been about my own. And you, that's one of the things you begin to know when somebody, or when we, especially, this is not just about somebody. This is a me message today for all of us. How do I know that I really had an encounter with God when his will begins to become my will? When my will becomes, in, in a sense, you see, I, I, I begin to have that revelation. It's no longer me, but it's about him. What do you want me to do, Lord? It's not me here getting you to bless my will. Lord, what is your will that's already blessed? What is your plan that you want from me? He said in Proverbs, in all your ways, don't lean on your own understanding, but look to him, and he'll bring the direction we need. You know, if you, if you find yourself not having the fulfillment that you think you, 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 you see in the word you ought to be having, then we might need to get into the word and make sure we're on the right path. Woo, preacher, preacher, ah, la, la. Anyway, he said, what do you want? He said, arise, verse 8, or verse 6, I'm sorry, and go into the city, and it will be told thee what thou must do. When he, uh, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. I bet it was messing with their head a little bit. Right. And uh, so Saul arose from the earth, and his eyes were opened, but he saw no man because obviously he'd been blinded by the light. Those song made up of that later on. Blinded by, anyway, three days later, he said he was without sight. And uh, but let, me, let me just, uh, where I want to go. Verse 10. He said, there was a disciple. Now, God's, God's working on this while he's working on that. Right. 
You know, so that's why we don't grow weary and well-doing. You just take care of what you're supposed to do and let God take care of the rest. Uh-huh. You know, God didn't, uh, Saul didn't already understand fully what God was doing in two places at the same time, but he's well able. Well able. And see, while he's working on you, he can be working on somebody to be set up for you. He said at the same time there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And uh, the Lord said to him a vision, Ananias. And he said, Lord, yes, sir, here I am. Good answer. And he said, arise and go into the street, which is called straight. You know, it, it's... It, it, if we're having trouble hearing his voice, it's because we haven't spent enough time with him to become familiar with it. Or maybe we're allowing distractions. That every, every child of God needs to be able to discern the voice of God. Amen. He said, my sheep question. No, no, that's not what yours says either, right? At least they hadn't hacked it that far. My sheep know. My sheep know my voice. So if we're, if we're struggle. If we're having a struggle hearing, then we make sure, number one, we got distractions out of the way, and number two, we're spending enough time with him to be familiar and comfortable so when he speaks, we know we hear it. I mean, here Saul is, just had a radical conversion, and immediately he knew it was the Lord. Of course, I think the light kind of gave it away. But anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, and Ananias getting this direct direction, I mean, very specific direction, very specific. There's some folks in here today, and you need very specific direction. When's the last time you fasted and prayed and sought the Lord on whatever that is? Uh, you, you can't live on somebody else's revelation. You've got to have your own revelation. You know, I'm thankful for what's put in here, but what's put in the Word is so you and I can get in the presence of God and hear Him for ourselves. You know, let Him speak to you from the Word that you are reading. Then that Word comes alive, and then you have some clear direction. Amen? He said, Go into this street called Straight, into the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for he is there praying. And he's seen in a vision, man named Ananias. Wow, you talk about a setup. You know, God loves you the same as he loves them. God will do for you what he did for them. You know, but even more than this, we got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So, man, you got a direct connection with heaven. Come on, let's get busy finding out what he wants for us to do. Amen? He said he, said, he, said he had in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hands on him that he would receive his sight. Ananias, see, Ananias didn't know the conversion that had taken place. He knew the Saul. He didn't know what had already happened. He didn't know God was doing surgery, a new heart. We're talking about a new heart. And he said, Lord, I have heard. Isn't it amazing how sometimes we, we, we talk to the Lord like he don't know? It's like, Lord, I don't know if you understand what's going on down here, but let me inform you if you've been taking a nap. We, 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 this country's in a mess. Yeah, and I'm waiting on y'all to pray and so I can move in here and fix it. Ooh. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever, oh. Uh, who, whose court is the ball in? He's unchecked us. It's in our, the ball's in our court, right? Lord, I don't know if you know what's going on, but this is a bad man. He is doing all kind of bad stuff. And he is coming down here with authority to do even more bad stuff. And anyway, how God just kind of puts him back on point. Get up and go. Get up and go. Are you, man, I, I want to challenge all of us today. Are, are we questioning what we think we know, or do we want to just go with what God said? Mm. See, so, uh, Ananias is trying to inform God about things that he thinks are true and has no idea what's really happened. We don't know what's already taken place. We don't know what change is already set in motion. We don't know what's already happened overnight. Don't be talking about yesterday what God's already changed last night. We can't say we're believing for miracles and keep reminding God of what was. Yeah. We got to talk about what is and what's going to be, not what used to be. And I don't know about y'all, but I know he's talking to me because he's as I as I talk, it's always coming back. You know, he's reminding me of things even now. So I quit talking about that because I'm done with it. Quit talking about that because I've already started changing it. And you can't believe for the new if you're still in, focusing on the. Hmm. Go your way. He is chosen. He is a chosen vessel. So we know this change that took place. Saul needed a new heart for his new purpose. Come on, say new purpose. Come on, a new purpose. We jump over to verse 20 straightway because after he had that encounter with his brother, with uh, his new believers, it says straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. I mean, the very one he was persecuting, now he's declaring, man, heart surgery, heart surgery, heart surgery. Don't tell me God can't turn it around. You might be believing for your child to come in, but don't understand. Don't talk about what you don't understand. Talk about what God can do. 
Don't, don't get caught up in, Lord, I don't see how it's going to happen. Lord, I don't, I, I'm excited to see how you're going to make it happen. Yeah. Come on, watch your words. Come on, watch your words. Lord, I don't understand. Get it out of the way. Don't even talk about it. Don't even let doubt and unbelief creep in through that door you cracking open. Don't talk about what you don't understand. How is God? God, I'm excited because I know you're going to make it happen. I'm excited, Lord, because I, I, I've seen too much. I know. I've read. I've heard. I, I, and I, even, that, I, even if I've never seen or known, I know you can. Start talking about what he's going to do and what he's already set in motion. Man, it's amazing how just those, that little shift right there, that little heart check, that attitude change, attitude, you know, correction is just direction, right? right. You, you, you could be just one degree off, but one degree can, can cause you to hit or miss your target. So watch your words. Watch your words. So he said the one he was destroying, he's now building. He said he, he began to preach Christ, that he was uh, the Savior, salvation. In uh, verse 20, let me, let me back up. And it said, and all that heard him were amazed. Isn't this he that destroyed those that called on the name, in this name in Jerusalem, and he came even here for that same intent? Come on, heart surgery. Come on, say heart surgery. Heart surgery. Let's look at another heart surgery. Luke chapter 19. I want to focus in on this so we can have an expectation of what God is able to do. See this new heart for this new life that God is storing uh, or working on, and probably still at work on all of us. Amen. Luke chapter 19 verse 1 said Jesus came through this area of uh, Jericho. And it said there was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He was set. Thought he had everything, but he had nothing. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. But he couldn't see him because of the crowd, or the King James says because of the press, because he was of a, of, of a little stature. He was vertically challenged. Right? And uh, it's amazing how sometimes we let the littlest of things, that, that didn't mean to be punny about that, but we let, we, let, we let, but it's true, we let very small things get in our way instead of pressing in. And sometimes it just exposes our heart. Do we really believe what we said we believe? If we can be put off by something so small, do we really have the faith that we said or we think we have? Probably not. You need to get back into the Word, right? Get back into the Word until we have faith so we can have a faith without works is dead. You know, he wanted to see him. He was not put off by uh, complications. What are you willing to do? So he ran before, he saw and kind of got, got the direction of which way the crowd was going. I believe the Holy Ghost was kind of helping the boy out. And he climbed up into a tree to see him because he knew it was going to pass by that way. Uh, are you willing to be made a fool of to have what the Lord says you can have? Are you willing to lose your reputation? Until we get to that point, until you get to the place where you'll lose your reputation, you're probably not going to have the fullness of what God has for you. Yeah, man, it is quiet in this room. Even Jesus, our example, said he, he became of no reputation. Well, what, what, what if they talk about me? Let me go ahead and help you. They're going to talk about you. They are going to talk about you. Are you going to let that stop you? No. We should not. We should not. As a matter of fact, we ought not even be surprised when they talk about us. I don't know about y'all, but I got, I got a dirt, enough dirt in my closet to cover everybody in this room probably with all the, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, and, and past failures and mistakes. Jesus was absolutely perfect, and they still talked about him. You think they're going to try to run us down? You think, they not gonna, you think the enemy's not going to try to come after you and make up junk on you to get you to stop? Time for a little wake-up call. If we, if we expected everything to be all roses and walk through and, and nothing going to happen, faith does not prevent storms in life. Faith is what gets you to the other side. Faith is, is what empowers us to get through in spite of the circumstances, in spite of what the devil's doing, in spite of what the enemy is throwing. Faith is an empowerment for us. Amen? Come on, faith is what, what, what the, the strength we tap into to go beyond when this flesh wants to quit. I didn't, I didn't say we wasn't going to feel it in the flesh. Man, every one of us are going to feel it. Yes, that's why we don't let feelings lead us. We don't let feelings manipulate us. Because once the devil realizes he can yank that chain, he's going to keep yanking that chain. 
That's why we got to recognize if we have a weakness, we need to recognize if we have a bent in those certain things. If, if, if the Lord shows us we got a people-pleasing spirit, we need to let the Holy Ghost put that in check. Because if he can manipulate us by what people think, then guess what's going to happen? If he can manipulate your faith by people coming in and planting doubt and unbelief, guess what's going to happen? So we need to shut down those avenues so he doesn't have a way in. Jesus said, the enemy comes, but he has nothing in me. He learned how to shut every avenue down. I don't know why I'm snapping, but <laughs> got a snappy jacket on, so I guess I'm just going to snap it. Anyway, Zacchaeus ran, and, and, he, and he saw this. He found this sycamore tree. Y'all know the little song? He was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree to see what he could see. Jesus gets, I know, to the place, and he looked up, and he sees him. And he says, Zacchaeus, make haste. And come down for today. I must. You know, I, I'll come back and touch on this in a minute. But again, every, every word in here, I, I believe, has an importance to it. and has, has something, an empowerment that we need to see. I must abide at your house. So he made haste. He came down and received the Lord. And then it says, even here, they all see it. And, and, and people start talking about it. Want to run, run down Jesus. Why, why is he going to hang with him? Ain't none of their business. Matter of fact, if they had a heart for people like Jesus did, they'd understand why he was going. Mm-hmm. Going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. I'm glad he went out of his way to get the sinners because I wouldn't be here. Zacchaeus, we're talking about heart surgery. We're talking about a new heart. We're talking about what the Lord can do, how he can turn it around if we allow, how we can turn it around he can turn it around and, and, and cause things to just change in a moment. It said, verse 8, Zacchaeus stood and he said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half my goods I give to the poor. Man, this was a guy who was robbing from people, stealing them blind, all about me. And immediately the change. New heart. Come on, say new heart. New heart, new heart, new heart, new heart. New heart. From a taker to a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. And you immediately see this new nature taking place. You immediately see, you know, this transformation beginning to take. Now, he's not perfect, but he's on the path. And none of us perfect, but we ought to be on the path, Amen. right? We ought to be on the path to perfection, letting the Lord lead us, letting him, him continually get the old out and the new in. Amen. Half my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything like he hadn't from any man by false accusation, I'm going to give him back 400%. Woo! So, glory to God. Father, I pray right now over anybody that's been cheated in this place. Restitution and restoration. God, you gave Jacob a plan. Mm-hmm. Mm. You said enough's enough. Laban has stolen enough from my son. It's time for payback. Lord, anybody that's been cheated out of an inheritance, anybody that's been cheated out of a job, anybody that's been cheated out of a raise, a bonus, a promotion, anybody been cheated out of anything, Lord, we declare restoration and restitution now in Jesus' name. Father, we call it in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We lose, we lose angels to be about this, Lord God. And I thank you that, Lord, there begin to be handfuls on purpose in our path. God, as you order our steps, God, it's going to be unmissable and unmistakable. Lord, I thank you that you open up doors right now that no man can open. You shut when needs to be shut so that we're not distracted, we're not delayed, and we will not be denied. Lord, and I thank you that as these things are done and as this is beginning to unfold, as things are beginning to turn around, Lord, it will give us an opportunity. It will give us a platform to be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Because people will question why and where and how and who. God, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to tell them about your goodness. You said it's the goodness of God that causes men to shift and change and repent and turn around. So, Lord, let us put you on display. Let us live you loud and large in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Come on, say amen. amen. You believe that? I, it, as quick as he can turn my grass brown to green, he can turn it around. Amen. I'm believing for profitable accounts for our business folk. And wherever you are at, I'm calling in profitable accounts. I'm praying for new vision and insight for you. New heart, new empowerment. So we need to all be stepping in on some of this. And he said, fourfold, I restore back to him. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to your house. Something about this, you know, back up in verse 5 where he said, make haste for today. I wonder if he had to do it that day because it would not have been another day. 
Well, you know, I just, you know, I, I know you kind of want me to do something, Lord, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to get that tomorrow. You, he said, today I need to be at your, and I believe there's a specific way the, the Lord words things in the word. Why would he intentionally say it today? I, it's just, personally, I just kind of think that way sometimes. It's like, I wonder if it wouldn't have been a tomorrow. I wonder if somebody he cheated was going to come on him that next day. Somebody he done robbed or somebody he done been after going to put an end to him. Just throwing it out there. It's amazing how we sometimes put off stuff. Matthew chapter 4. New heart for a new purpose. It's not just about them. He's got stuff for all of us. Amen. And we're fixing to get into that. Well, that's about them. And, you know, that's just, you know, that's all well and good. But what about, you know, man, I don't feel like I, well, I'm fixing to get into all of our business. Amen. Matthew chapter 4. That's what the rest of the day is going to be about is getting in all of our business. New heart for new purpose. New heart for a new life. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 said, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me and I will make you fishers. Of men, new heart for new purpose. And straightway they followed him. They forsook their nets and going on a little bit further down, sees James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother. You know, sons of thunder. They're in the ship. They're mending the nets with their dad. And he called unto them. And immediately, come on, say immediately. 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 That's the response he's looking for from every single one of us. Immediately. Immediately. We won't. Don't expect results when you pray if you don't have expected uh, results when to obey. Mm. I said, don't expect results when you pray if you don't have instant results to obey. Don't expect the Lord to do what we won't do for him. Mm. Mm. I, I, I'm sorry. I said, it's going to be in your business. He goes on, and he says, immediately they left the ship and their father, and they followed the Lord. Now, he may not call you out in such a radical way, but he is expecting an obedience immediately when he gives you a purpose. When he calls you to do something. And he may, it may be just an awakening to, to, to your purpose where you already are. It doesn't mean he's going to call you out and into something new. There's many times we've seen people and they, the Lord will move on them and say, I'm going to do something for you. And immediately they think, they think they're called to preach, but they don't realize they don't have a, Their podium is their job. The, their podium is their platform. Your job is your podium. Right? If everybody had a podium in a sense, who's going to take care of the, the working force and the laborers and those who might not come to church to hear the word for the first time? Or... It, 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 church is not in these four walls. We are the church. We are the church empowered to go out beyond these four walls to infiltrate. He said go into all and preach the gospel. Amen. So that's what, we have a new heart for a new purpose, and we have this new empowerment. God's given us this new stuff and this, this calling on our life, this purpose on our life, so that we can be fulfilled at what we do. Now you begin to understand that your vocation is an empowerment for your calling. Your vocation is a, is a placing for your calling. You, you can be a mechanic who's going to fix the car right. Not be ripping people off and not be charging them three times the rate. Come on. You know, when people say, well, man, how, how, can, how are you doing this? Or why are you doing this? Because this is my calling. This is my, this is my equipping. This is what I do. And I do it as unto the Lord. Don't miss those opportunities. That, that, that's what brings the fulfillment. That's what brings the satisfaction in life. There's so many people are hungry and thirsty for and looking for, but don't have that revelation yet that your, your, your vocation is not your calling, but your calling brings the satisfaction to your vocation. We need doctors and lawyers and policemen and firemen and whatever, butcher, baker, candlestick maker. We need everybody just empowered in their purpose. That's why he gives us his new heart because that new heart may cause you to see the people that you didn't like yesterday in a new light today. Just like Ananias coming in and he said, man, I don't want to talk to that man. Oh, that hit too close to home, didn't it? I'll get back. I said, I was going to get in your business. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to give you more on it. We don't have just one scripture. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back it up with the word. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. There's a lot of 17s in here today. We've heard this and, and focus on this a lot. But verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, be any man, and he's talking about mankind, not just male, he's talking about male and female, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed, all things become new. We're in this series called New Stuff, right? He's giving us new stuff. I mean, it's a whole bunch. We've been over six weeks in this. He said, yeah, and all things are of God, verse 18, who has reconciled you and I to himself by or through Jesus and has given to, come on, say us. Us. Given to who? Us. us. Come on, say, that's me. That's me. He's not, this is not for the Corinthians only. This is for believers. Is you a believer? Hey, I'm a believer. I could, no, I'm sorry. I didn't need to be monkeying around with y'all. Oh, uh, some of y'all don't even know what that is. I, I'm, I just, uh, I'm, sometimes you just, anyway. They had a cool car, so I, you know, it, it, I'm a car guy. He said, all things are of God who's reconciled you and I to himself through Jesus and has given to us the ministry. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you're a minister. You're a minister. Look at your other, look at your other neighbor and say, you're a minister. You too, you too, you too. And then come on, you might need to pat yourself on the chest and say, me too. Me too, me too. Because I, I, I'm not a minister because I have a podium. I'm a, I'm a, I have a podium because I'm a minister, but that doesn't mean it's the only call. Again, or back to whatever you are, whatever vocation, whatever gifting God has for you, you are a minister in that vocation. Now, your vocation may change, but your ministry never will, in a sense. You're always going to be a minister of God. You, you're always going to have some purpose, some empowerment in the kingdom that God wants you and I to be about. Jesus said it. I mean, he, he had this revelation at 12. I got to be about the Father's business. I got to be about the Father's business. How, how am I going to expect to have a, a check from heaven if I'm not about the Father's business? What's the, what do you mean by a check from heaven? Empowerment from heaven? A blessing from heaven? Uh, it, it's, it's back to what we looked at earlier. I, I can't expect uh, promises if I'm not standing on his principles and operating in those principles. But if I'm about... Uh, I know this is messing with y'all because I'm talking, kind of putting it in a money context. But the Bible says laborers receive wages. There's only two kingdoms. So where are your check coming from? We're working for light or we're working for dark. If I'm working for the Father, then I can expect heavenly blessings. Woo, glory to God. That ought to be a rally call for us, though. You know, as a matter of fact, if I'm working for the Father, I need to be expecting heavenly blessings. Now, I don't do it for the blessings. I do it for him to do it as unto the Lord. Do what we, do it. we do what we do because we love him. But you better know the Father is going to take care of his own. And the Father is going to bring an empowerment into our life to be able to do because he said a laborer is worthy of their hire. Woo. We are ministers. We are ministers. Back to you. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? Now, uh, he said, who has made us or given to you now the ministry of reconciliation. Come on, say new ministry. New ministry. New, ministry. That, new heart for a new life, new ministry. Ephesians chapter 4. He's given us new stuff, new stuff, not all broke, wore down, wore out. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. We're looking at this new, new life and new ministry. And it's, ah, yeah, but I just, I don't feel it. Well, we got to not be led by feelings. It's one of the things we got to learn to put down. You know, we have feelings, but they're, they're not to be our master. We're to be led by the Spirit. We're going to look at that before we close up. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. He said, do we henceforth, I don't you love some King James, right? When's the last time you used henceforth in a sentence? Go into Mar at work and say, henceforth. <laughs> Just lead off with that. Lead off with that in the conversation with your coworkers. Henceforth. You were in church yesterday, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> KJV? Yeah, me too. We henceforth be no more children Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by slight of men, craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Man, if it was, then you know it is now. I mean, the enemy has been working on this for, you know, thousands of years, trying to pervert, trying to 
twist and tweak and manipulate and control and, per, you know, just pervert stuff. So just be, a, be, be aware of how the enemy operates. You know, and, and it's like almost when you hear something that, man, just recognize when, it's, when it don't set right. Even if it sounds right, if it don't set right, it could be being, it could be, be being, that's weird saying that, but it could be being spoken by a wrong spirit. The enemy can, I mean, we ought to, I mean, in the world, I mean, you should have an expect, well, not an expectation, but just have an awareness that the enemy, we know he operates out there, but don't be surprised when he tries to slip somebody up in here to operate. Everybody that comes up to you and says, thus saith the Lord, you, you need to check that word. And you need to try and test that spirit in a sense. It's like, Lord, is this you? This is you? If somebody, that, that's why the Bible says don't lay hands on people suddenly. And don't let nobody run up and lay hands on you suddenly. Amen. Guard yourself and guard your heart. Guard your spirit. Guard your surroundings. Guard your family. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, you, just, we, we need to have a maturity about it is what I'm, what I'm getting to. You know, I don't mean we need to be scared of everybody that's walking around. But just be led by the spirit. Because the enemy's trying to slip people in to atmospheres like this to bring in some weirdness, right? That's why we need to have a familiarity with the Holy Spirit, a familiarity with how he moves, how he operates, how he sounds, you know, and let it bear witness in our spirit. Don't just let anybody run up to you and just start doing crazy stuff, you know. And if it's already happened, just say, I shake that off in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, that wasn't of you, and I don't receive it. I renounce it. I denounce it. I reject it outright. In Jesus' name. Any word that's contrary to your will to my life, Lord, I renounce it. I denounce it. I reject it. In Jesus' name. I, I, I won't receive a curse, a hex, or a spell. It, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Every tongue. It says we condemn. We take it down. We got the amen, brother. Thank you. You, you, you. He said it. That's what he said. Guard your heart. Out of it are the issues of life. So we can't be. Don't let nobody be dumping junk in your well. Out of our heart, we got to keep that well clean. This is one of the ways we do so here. He said, we gotta got to get beyond that childlike nature where we're just being tossed around and running after this and running after that. And I, I've, I've said before, I, I, man, I, I like revival. I, it, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. It's fun. It's refreshing. But you can get it. it, it mm, uh, help me say this right. You don't just chase revival. We follow the Spirit. Because, I mean, you can get to a, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a terminology, or not, but you can get to where you get on like a Christian high and, and not realize that now we're being emotionally driven. Revival, huh? revival. Huh? 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 So you, now you got to have, you got to feel God before you believe God. If you don't feel God, then you don't think he's there. He said, two or more gathered in my name. I'm in the midst. He didn't say nothing about how you felt, how we felt, right? I mean, he is or he ain't. He's speaking truth or not. And if you, just because you didn't feel God in the service, you may have missed out on a miraculous impartation. Well, I just didn't feel him in there today. Well, he was up in here. Just because, yeah, and he's going to be. As long as we got two or more gathered in his name. You, you see where I'm going with this, right? But it, if the devil recognizes a weakness, he will absolutely Try to exploit that weakness. Woo! Preach it, preach it. But speaking the truth in love. I, could, I want to spend time on that, but I can't. But if, if, it, if you, it can be truth, but if you can't say it in love, just hold it. May grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from the whole body, fitly joined together, compacted. This is where I want to get to, by that which every joint supplies. It, are you in the body? Yes, you are. Yes. Let me just clarify. What a trick question. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am in the body. If you are in the body, then you have a supply. Look at your neighbor. I want some help. Look at you. You have a supply. You have a supply. You have a supply. You have a supply. Don't be holding back on me if you got a supply now. We need what you got. We need what you got. We don't, we don't need bench warmers on, in the, on the team. Oh, Every joint has a supply. 
Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm taking some time on this, but it's intentional by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because there will be a reckoning day with, did you, did you use what he gave? Right. Parable of the talents. Parable of the talents. And it did not go well for the one who hid the talent. So don't you, don't you, we cannot, we cannot allow the enemy to deceive us into thinking we have nothing, therefore we do nothing. Because God said we have something, so we need to be doing something. Making sense? He comes at too many of us and says, well, you, that's for them, not for you. No, it's for all of us. For all of us. He's given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. He says here clearly, every, every joint. Has a supply. What are we doing with it? And if we're not doing anything, we need to get before the Father and say, Father, clearly, show me the oil in my house. You know, when the widow came to the prophet, he said, what you want me to do? You do. Help me, Lord. Get his tongue straight. What would I, what do you want me to do for you? He said, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? Don't be looking in somebody else's house for what you have in your house. Recognize what's in your house and God can multiply it. So Recognize what's in your house and God can do exceeding abundant above and beyond. Because ain't nobody got a house with nothing in it. The devil is a liar. If you think God brought you into the kingdom and didn't give you a new heart, didn't give you a new purpose, and didn't give you an empowerment to do something in the kingdom. The devil is a lie. Amen. You're breathing, you got a purpose. You got a calling on you. You got a quipping in you. He said every joint... He said, supplied, compacted by that which every joint supplies. Now, don't supply a joint. He said, joint supply. I, yes, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, I hope, I, I just, uh, Pastor Louis was in Colorado, and it's legal over there, so I always have to just, I know it probably gets older. He probably said, here we go again. I just, so I'm not going to say nothing about y'all having legal out there, and that ain't why you went to school in Colorado, I don't think, but I just want to, you know, I mean, uh, you know I love him. I, 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 if he didn't know my heart, I couldn't pick on him. I love him. I love him. But don't supply a joint. You have a joint supplies. That's, that's just uh, it's my calling. That's what the word. He said it's bringing a joint. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> Stop it, people. And he goes on and he says, uh, according to the effectual work in verse 16, of the, uh, in the measure of every part, so that it make his, makes increase in the body, building itself up in love. Therefore, I say this, verse 17, again 17, and testify, do not walk as other Gentiles walk. You can't walk the old walk in the new kingdom. Don't work. Don't work. It doesn't work. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. We ain't done yet. Say new stuff. New stuff. New stuff. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 18. Might not even have to turn the page. Oh, okay. My wife did, so everybody turn the page just cause. Ephesians 2, verse 18. Is that where I want to go? He said that this is the prayer here. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. No. Go to Romans 8. No, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, chapter, yeah, it is 2, 18. Yeah, 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 okay. Having a moment here. I'm looking at 3 thinking it's 2. That's not right. You didn't turn the page. I didn't turn my page. <laughs> Should have saw that coming. Ephesians 2, verse 18. For through him, thank you, Lord. Through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Still talking about new stuff and what God's doing for us. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. Woo! Glory to God. Because with the new purpose and the, and the new heart and, and the new life comes a new family. Amen. And there are people who feel like they're by themselves and they're out there on their own. And I'm telling you, God has a family for you and God has connections for you and God has a fulfillment for you. And God, man, has a, has a purpose and a, and a belonging he said, God has made you accepted in the beloved. 
Accept it in the beloved. And there are so many people that are hurting because of rejection. And the Father's up there with open arms, calling us to a place of acceptance and love and fulfillment. Come on, say new family. New family, new family. You are fellow citizens with the saints of God and of the household of God. Glory to God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple to the Lord. He said, built for a spiritual habitation. Now, Romans chapter 8, we'll close with this. Glory to God. New family. Woo, glory. There's so many that this is the connection you've been looking for. Man, and when you begin to have an awakening of this family, sometimes this is, this is the, the empowerment that causes your, your natural family to shift is when you realize this. Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons. Come on, say sons. He's talking about sonship. He's talking about for mankind, for all of us, you and I, male and female. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Come on, just say that, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. You have a Father in heaven who loves you, who, who knew all about you and still chose you. Do you realize the power of what he is saying right here? You can't choose the natural family you were born into, but God chose you and I. Yeah, but you don't know all the mess I got. I don't, I don't want to know, but God knew and he did it anyway. He did it anyway because he wasn't concerned about where you've been. He knows what he's got for you. He knew about the new life. He knew about the new heart. He knew about the new purpose. He knew about the new family, and he purposely chose to bring you into it. Glory to God. Quit letting the devil tell you you have no value or no purpose or no meaning or, or, or whatever other lie he's been trying to feed you and shut you down. Amen. Come on, you got a new life, you got a new purpose, you got an Abba who loves you, who loves you. The Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He goes in and says, verse 18, because y'all know he's southern. For I reckon that the... See, y'all thought I'm making that up. See, it's straight up out of here. For I reckon... That the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared to the glory that is going to be revealed. Had to get a little preaching. Hey, glory. He said, verse 19, I mean, you see the awakening he wants to happen right here. He said, for the earnest expectation of the creature, that's, I know it gets thick in King James, waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. He said, this world is actually in travail, waiting for you to I to have an awakening to what God has done, to have an awakening for our eyes. He said, y'all stand. He said, for the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened so that we can know what is the hope of his call, what is the exceeding greatness of his glory, his power to us who believe. There's an empowerment that you can grab a hold of today. There's, there are things from God. There are, there's an empowerment and an equipping from heaven that he wants to download into us. He wants to download into you. Can we just drop the lights for a little bit, Jack? I just want to make sure we don't have any distractions right now. I'm going to get Pastor Louis to come on up. And, uh, but, man, there's an empowerment that he wants you to receive today. There, there, there is, a, there is a, a connection that the Lord wants you to have. There are those in here who, when I begin to say it, that it, it was touching your heart. You know, that, that, that where the enemy's tried to isolate you and make, make you feel like you're alone or you are you're, you're on the backside of nowhere and nobody even knows you exist. The devil is lying to you. The Father has a plan for you.